Welcome everyone. In this SkidsCam video for version 2023, we're going to show you enhancements 5 through 8. So let's get started. As you can see, the first one is going to be DCD work area limits. Now on this part I have here, as you can see, if I go to my coordinate systems, I have my top side, at my right hand side, back side, or front side. This could be called front side either way, uh, and left hand side. So the thing with uh, doing four and five axis parts is sometimes you don't want the rotary table to go in the wrong direction or you want to limit that table. So if I go to my machine sim, in this case it's an Akuma, and if I render this, this has an A-axis. You can see that looks good all front side. And then you'll see it's doing some of the part on the back side there, which is usually not preferable because it's hard to see what's going on there, easy to uh, bump into something and cause problems. So we want to limit that. Sometimes you don't want to limit that, sometimes you do. But we want to limit that, and that's something new in the enhancements in 2023. So that's under the document control. So if you click on that, you'll see a tab that says work area limits. Now, normally, most of the posts have limits put in them already by uh, what the customer wants, whether he wants everything limited uh, or not. And that's uh, put in the MDD. But you can override those limits. So in this case, I want to override these limits. So all you need to do is you just click on new work area which I created one here called my work area here and right now I have a minimum and maximum of zero and that's why when I'm rendering that's why it goes to the back side there because I'm telling it it's unlimited so as you can see it's going on the back side like I showed you and so we want to limit that a axis there now the C we usually C-axis, you usually want that unlimited, so we're not going to do anything with that. And you can limit just certain operations over here or do all of them. So you have a choice there if you just want some limited and some not. Maybe you have uh, clearance with a part or a fixture. You could limit what you would like. But in this case, I'm going to click on just all of them. So I have my work area limits here that I set, and you can give this a name if you'd like, uh, anything you'd like there. But on the second rotary axis, which is the A axis, I'm going to put a minimum on the back side of, uh, I'll just leave that at zero actually, because so, I don't want any of it to go on the back side. Uh, if you, you're okay with the A tilting back a little bit, you could put a value in there, but I want to keep it right there. Uh, on maximum, I'm going to put 110 positive 110 degrees, which is the maximum limit of the Akuma uh, 460. And you can click on update the ops to make sure the ops are updated. And that sets your limit right there. So now if we go to the uh, cut part render, the machine sim, you'll see the difference that it makes. So let's slow this down. Now when I render, Everything looks good there. It's going to the front side, which it did before on these two ops, or that first op. And then the, on the little tabs there, you can see now it's staying to the front side because we told it it can't go to the back side. So even though we programmed the part, let me finish this out. So if we turn machine sim off, even though I programmed this part, uh, these holes on the front side, which would make the A go into an A minus, uh, Gibbs knows that was the limit that we set and uh, brought it to the front side. So work area limits, you can set any number of work area limits and you can choose which operations you want to put limits on there. So this is a good addition in the enhancement number five. So it's called work area limits and give it the name whatever you'd like to do, whether it's a fourth axis or fifth axis, and you can have it limit on what you would like to see. So that is enhancement number five. 
Enhancement number six, cylindrical milling from cylindrical profiles. Now this is using the profiler, but there's a new icon in the profiler now up here, and it is called the slice cylinder. So a little bit better explanation here if you turn on balloons, but uh, if we turn balloons back off, that's this icon right here. So if we turn this on, you can see it's uh, slicing basically a cylindrical profile here. So it's not the spun like when you're doing turning. This is for milling. And of course you can uh, grab it and increase the cylindrical size by dragging. But of course you want it, you want to put it at the diameter uh, that you want to unwrap. And of course you could right click and say uh, in this case it needs to be 2 inch, which is what it is here. So then you select the profiles. In this case we're going to use volume mill. Select the profiles and click on do it. And then you're going to end up with a tool path like this. And this is using volume mill, works on volume mill, works on any other process as well. And then here I just have a regular uh, roughing process in Gibbs using the profiler as well. And uh, this is going to clean up the floor there. So if we run the rendering, let's go back to ISO view, run the rendering. And then we'll run the uh, finish pass. This is called cylindrical milling from cylindrical profiles. And like I say, this is a new icon in the profiler section down here at the bottom. So it makes it much easier. You still have uh, under modify wrap and unwrap if you if you have something that's flat and you need to wrap it around there that's that's fine that's still there but uh, if you want to use the profiler which makes things much easier now than having to grab geometry and unwrapping it uh, from a solid model so that was number six cylindrical milling from cylindrical profiles number seven mill bore There's a few new options in Millbore, and as you can see, let's bring up the first operation here. You can say I have see I have uh, four bores here. We're actually we're only going to do the three here. But if I bring up the process here uh, under the drill tab, of course you have Millbore, and some of these we'll show you in some of the other enhancements. But this one's the rough Millbore finish mill bore and helix bore. So this uh, first operation here, we're going to do rough mill bore. I'm going to click on the bore here. Of course, we'll put in our diameter and our step and things like that. And we'll just click redo that. And as you can see, let's rewind that. We'll slow it down a little bit. This is much like what we already have. You can see it's going down and going over to the side, cutting and going in steps. But the new one is we'll go to drill again, rough mill bore again on this one here. And normally when you're doing, uh, say, a rough mill bore, you usually have a hole in here already because you're doing a counter bore, things like that. Uh, same thing over here, but now we have a new one that says spiral. So under spiral, you can put the cut width in here. And as I render this, slow it down going to plunge but now you're going to see it's going to spiral out as it's going out to the bore so much nicer toolpath than having it go sideways there to 
uh, for the in feed and then uh, cutting this way it's going to spiral and of course you can give it your multiple depths as well so a very nice enhancement there and the last one in uh, the enhancement here on the mill bore let's bring that one up is helix bore so again you can go to the bore tab put in your information there the pitch that you would like um, similar to contour ramp but this this way you can select multiple holes all at the same time and do uh, multiple processes for whatever you'd like to do there but this one has uh, the Z pitch and this is helix bore of course you can put everything else in there as like the other processes there so what you end up with on the mill bore finished mill bore helix let's rewind and play slow it down as you can see we're doing a helix down the bore so some very nice enhancements on the bore tab for boring holes and that is enhancement number seven mill bore spiral boring um, spiral infeed number seven and the last enhancement today is mill roughing do not plunge it's a new option in mill roughing so here we have our part here just a solid model and we're just using a standard roughing process well normally when you do a standard roughing process and you have auto plunge on and if we render this it's not only gonna going to uh, do the outside it's also going to plunge down in here which is uh, many times we don't want it to do that we just want to clean up the outside of that so we have this new option now called no plunge so do not plunge and if we run that again which is the second one here do not plunge you can see it skips the um, areas inside the solid model just cuts the outside of that and if we render that let's rewind it first let's just deactivate this one and as you can see it just cuts the outside now this also works in volume mill so if we do volume mill you can see the toolpath again with volume mill a little nicer toolpath uh, on the volume mill so let's just uh, deactivate this one for now we'll highlight this and go to the cut part render rewind and the volume mill toolpath that is something new in version 2023 the ability to have auto plunge on you have auto plunge plunge ramp helix and of course the new one do not plunge so that's a new enhancement in 2023 called mill roughing do not plunge and that's it for enhancements five through eight more to come